Hi everyone, Bruce here again. It's Friday, June 12th, and I'm just uh, giving an update again. We recorded one yesterday on June 11th, but then uh, in the afternoon the government came out with uh, additional guidelines and some changes. And again, we appreciate that the government is opening up and we're in uh, phase three still, but uh, there are increased uh, opportunities for churches as they continue to change the requirements uh, for us in terms of places of, of worship. So again, we're daily, weekly, constantly evaluating and adapting to those things. One of the things that we are doing right now is we are uh, starting to allow lead teams to meet in our buildings effective immediately. And so those are the teams that are connected to our staff. And our staff are going to be uh, being the ones who do the bookings and also uh, be the host people. And they know the protocols of our cleaning and how we function around here in terms of operating within uh, both our Attridge building and also our Northside building. But when it comes to uh, corporate worship gatherings and gathering in a larger group on a Sunday morning, that's still going to be a little bit yet. Um, we know that uh, we've got increased freedoms there. In fact, the new uh, numbers are about 150 people. Uh, that they're allowing for places of worship, but that's still with a lot of restrictions that are going to make it uh, feel very, very different than what we're used to in terms of corporate worship gatherings. So we're going to walk into some of these other areas first before we look at how we combine both our digital online experience together with gatherings uh, in person. One of the things that Paul even said uh, in scripture is, uh, as he talked about his freedom in Christ, he says, you know, sometimes I don't exercise those freedoms uh, because of the sake of others, for the weaker brother or sister. And for us, we want to be careful of how we exercise our freedoms for the sake of the vulnerable among us. And so that's one of the uh, pieces that we constantly consider. Corporate worship gatherings is one of our four areas of discipleship, and we often refer them to them as context of discipleship. Way back in 2006, we actually changed how we think about being the church and how we structure ourselves. And so in that time, we identified four key areas that uh, our context of discipleship. And so when we are able to, and all of them have been effective during the season, there's no doubt about it, but all of them are still functioning in some form. And so we're adapting. And again, the church is still being the church, even though we can't do the corporate worship gathering one quite the way that we're used to. And so we look forward to that day when we can do that again in full freedom. We know that churches uh, all over the city and across obviously the country are making decisions uh, that they have to in different ways. And so I'm in con conversation with different pastors in our city, and I know that we're all kind of wrestling through it together. And we just want to really bless uh, each church as they have to make decisions on their own for what works in their context. Even within our three sites, we have three very different scenarios that we have to make decisions that are unique and different for each of our sites. And we're trying to do that. So we just want to be gracious and generous and bless other churches just as individuals as we have to bless other people as each one of us make decisions for our families uh, during this season of how and when and where we gather. Matthew 28, the Great Commission, and also Matthew 22, the Great Commandment. Those are texts that have always guided us as a church, and they continue to do so. Uh, we don't uh, operate out of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And in Matthew 22, where it says that you need to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, uh, we really want to be good neighbors. And that continues to be something that's important to us of how do we be good neighbors to our city. The last thing we want to do is to be a place that causes any kind of uh, spike in the pandemic or outbreak of any kind that, that compromises and put, puts families and individuals at risk. So as best we can, we're trying to follow the guidelines of Sask Health Authorities. They continue to say uh, wherever possible, we encourage you to continue to meet online. And so we're trying to do that. And we're also preparing for small incremental steps to actually having people in the building again. So we trust and we pray that you'll be patient and continue to walk with us, support us, give us feedback. We welcome that. Also just encourage you to connect with any of our pastoral staff. If you need prayer or just to uh, talk to somebody, uh, all of our contact information is on our website so you can get a hold of any one of us. As we want you to know that we love you, we're praying for you, and we look forward to when we can uh, be together again in the ways that we are used to and uh, that we would be transformed, that we'd be different people even because of this. God bless you this week.